It's that time of year where firefighters are working a lot of overtime. I'll have more here in a few minutes. And a black bear was killed by Fish, Wildlife and Parks in Billings. Coming up, why the agency says it was necessary to kill the bear instead of moving it to a different location. Good morning to you and welcome to your Friday. I'm Missy O'Malley with Chet Lehman at 6.30 on the dot and this is our top story for you right now. You may have seen that smoke column from the McCluskey fire northwest of Whitehall earlier this week. Yeah, it's been easily visible since last Friday. Now that fire is starting to spread. As of this morning, it's nearly 3,000 acres, triple the size it was less than 48 hours ago. View Ranger District says that's due to dry and windy weather. Groups of trees are bursting into flames at once. The fire is spotting or casting. Fire Amber is a quarter of a mile ahead of the flames, and it's pushing around the edges of the fire to engulf new areas. Now, yesterday, fire crews worked to protect private property, continue to build indirect fire lines away from the fire point. That's because the fire is burning in steep, remote areas where up to 80% of the trees have been killed by disease or insects. That makes the terrain simply too dangerous for fire crews to directly fight it. Higher humidities and even some rain expected through the weekend, uh, which fire managers say will be a big help. And the Fish Hawk fire burning near Cody, Wyoming, has grown to more than 10,000 acres. Now officials have issued mandatory evacuation notices for cabins in the Kitty Creek drainage, great drainage and Buffalo Bill Boy Scout camp. Now due to the smoke, there is decreased visibility along U.S. Highway 14, 16, and 20. Drivers are being asked to drive in with much caution on those routes. And this week alone, two fires started in the Great Falls area. Wednesday, Hill 57 caught uh, fire around 4.30, then started up again yesterday morning. According to Black Eagle Fire Chief Mike Deshays, approximately 80 acres burned in the Hill Fire, resulting in the loss of one resident's storage shed. While the cause of that fire is still under investigation, Deshays says people can prevent fires like this by keeping the grass around their homes cut low, their landscapes well manicured, gutters clean, storing timbers away from houses, and most importantly, keeping the area watered. And local fire department departments responded to three separate fires yesterday in Gallatin County. Those hours can add up to firefighters. MTN's Carson Vicroy has more. In the Gallatin Valley, fire departments rely on volunteers, especially for an active day like yesterday. Um, agencies such as Big Sky, Bozeman, Central Valley that have paid staff as well as volunteers. Um, we, did a, we did an off-duty callback yesterday. These callbacks are common and expected at this time of year for both paid and volunteer firefighters. This time of year, everybody's a little more conscious of the wildfire. Uh, response and what can happen and, and those could be extended stay events. Firefighters from across the Gallatin Valley should plan to work long hours based on how dry the fuels are, like the example I have in my hand here, but you also need to be prepared for working long hours in the heat. Obviously we need to make sure we have plenty of water to take with us and stay hydrated um, and, and be conscious of, of heat exposure. Um, the, the temperature itself, the ambient temperature itself is, is hot. But of course, the fire makes it even warmer. Yesterday was just one example of why we're not out of the woods yet from these fires. We need to be cautious and, and conscious of, of what we're doing. And if you don't have to burn, please don't. In Belgrade, meteorologist Carson Vicroy, MTN News. Now, Carson tells us if a fire is large enough where federal and local sources are needed, Natural Resource Conservation Service will end up paying the needed overtime for those local fire departments. Such tough work and so much of it. Yep. Yeah. Uh, the weather the last couple of days certainly been conducive to that. High heat, low humidities, windy conditions. Sounds makes like maybe a some, change is coming though. Makes for some tough work on the fire lines. The uh, weather pattern moving in mm -hmm. is going to be much easier. It's going to Mother Nature is going to lend a little hand for awesome. us as well. Um, looking at our shower activity this morning, mainly on the light side, but we are seeing some heavier downpours out toward West Yellowstone early on this morning. His temperatures are a little warmer, but the humidity is going up because of the rain that's trying to move in. Uh, likely to deal with showers and thunderstorms. Daytime highs only into the mid 70s for today, and it looks like our temperatures continue to cool with several chances of rain over the course of the next week. We're going to break this all down for you coming up in the bill on the billion auto weather patio in just a few minutes. Thank you, Matt. 635 now on this Friday. MTN's Mike Dennison has been looking at the status of high speed Internet and cell phone service in rural Montana. And today in the final segment of his three part series, he looks at the debate over the sources of funding that are needed to deploy or improve access to these services for many of us Montanans. The cell phone tower out here is no profit center, but does that mean rural Montanans should have to go without that service? 
For those living in Montana's rural areas or smaller towns, access to modern telecom services is seen as a critical need. It's a huge issue, and it doesn't matter if it's Haver or Big Sandy or Seattle. I mean, in, in today's economic environment, if you don't have access to um, reliable broadband, high-speed internet, um, I don't know how you can do business. And Federal Universal Service funds are helping expand high-speed internet into areas served by rural telecoms in Montana and a few areas served by larger companies. But precise data on where service is truly lacking make it difficult to target the funds. The challenge we have right now is that the maps are so bad that we don't know where the coverage is in, in rural America and where it isn't. And uh, when it comes to grants from the FCC, from the USDA, those maps are critically important. Tester is co-sponsoring a bill to attack that problem, but it's stalled in the Senate. He also says the federal government isn't exactly flush with cash right now. This country's running trillion dollar deficits every year, so it's really hard to find the money. We've got to figure out ways where we prioritize our spending in this country, and uh, broadband should be at the top of the list. If, if it isn't, we'll get left behind in the world economy we live. Those using federal money to build out modern telecom services in rural Montana say it's not enough, and that broadband should be seen as vital infrastructure. But if you were to go ask anybody in any community in Montana whether or not broadband is just as important a piece of infrastructure, I think the answer you're going to hear is yes. Williams also has an idea where at least some of the money could come from. The multi-billion dollar companies like Facebook, YouTube, and Netflix, which are major users of broadband. But to use my network, they don't pay me a single penny. So for example, of all the traffic on Blackfoot's network, 40% of that traffic is Netflix traffic. Netflix pays us nothing to use our network. Fiber optic broadband also is needed to activate and hook up cell phone towers in rural areas. Without some form of subsidy, the cost of these services for rural Montanans is not affordable. If you want to make it a market-based solution is what you're asking for, my customers' rates would quadruple. We're also talking big money, hundreds of millions of dollars over several years to bring affordable access to these services to most of Montana. Senator Tester, for one, believes it's worth it. Just because there's a few fewer people living out here doesn't mean we should forget about rural America. Uh, whether it's high-speed internet or, or whether it's uh, 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 cell, cell coverage, uh, we, can, we, can make, uh, we can make some better choices if we have access to that. I think there has to be a concerted effort, uh, especially in rural America, to, uh, to get the high-speed internet, the rural broadband uh, laid down. So the question becomes, will the money be there from somewhere so that rural Montana and rural America won't be left out in the communication wilderness. Near Loma, Mike Dennison, MTN News. In other news here on your Friday morning, Fish, Wildlife and Parks has been receiving calls about problems with black bears all summer long in Billings. Yesterday it edged up a notch when a black bear wandered into South Billings and then had to be killed. MTN's David Jay has more after talking with Fish, Wildlife and Parks. Billings Police had a report of a bear in this area on South 27th Street near 9th Avenue South in the post office. They called for help from Fish, Wildlife and Parks and ended up following the bear out toward a spot out on South 35th Street and 2nd Avenue South. So they followed it and it headed out through the uh, densely populated uh, parts of the south side uh, and made its way up all the way to South 35th Street and 2nd Avenue South and before it got there they had called a uh, uh, a game warden who came down and helped him follow it and track it and, and it got up into a tree and, uh, and it was time to do something with that bear. Uh, the situation could have gotten worse when we got daylight and people got up and started going to school and going to work and uh, getting into their yards and getting outside. Um, so uh, it was determined that it was the best course of action was to euthanize the bear. Is this a bear you'd seen before? Or? Well, we believe so. We've had uh, at least four bears uh, that have been in trouble in uh, south of Billings and the Blue Creek, uh, uh, Briarwood, uh, landfill area all summer long. Uh, this matches the description of one of those that uh, has been down there. Neighbors say they heard a couple of shots fired around 5 o'clock. Bob Gibson says trapping, tranquilizing, or moving the bear weren't options because of the concern that it might return to the area. 
Now, Bob Gibson says that bears can be a concern all over Montana. He advises keeping garbage and other potential bear food locked up wherever you live, especially this time of year. Especially this time they're of year. They're getting, getting ready the to hibernate. That's it. Stuff. They're That's getting ready right. to go away for a while. That's right. 640. It is time for us to take a break. We're so glad to have you with us here on this Friday morning.